Welcome to the ArcDocs podcast. This podcast features discussions from leading industry professionals regarding building information modeling and digital construction. If you enjoy this podcast, or if you would like us to feature a specific topic, please let us know in the comments section of our social media platforms. You can also check out our website at www.arcdocs.com for more information. Hi, I'm Ken Montague. I'm the head of technology for ArcDocs. And um, I've been asked to do this podcast uh, to kind of maybe dispel some myths about hardware and software within the building industry. Kind of a little bit of history myself. I've been in an IT role for some 20 years now. Prior to that, I was in a different industry completely. But of the 20 years that I've spent, I've spent most of that time building and breaking hardware uh, to try and make it work more efficiently and more effectively within a business environment. My kind of beginning phase to the IT was working for companies like Compaq and HP, uh, supporting customers like Microsoft and and uh, KPNG. So got a real sense of being on the front line of uh, being an analyst and uh, helping people kind of solve their problems within in the IT. I progressed fairly quickly because I changed industries. I came from a, a working from a production manager within the film industry, film and advertising within South Africa, and uh, moved to IT, really try and pursue my hobby, which was breaking and fixing uh, computers. Uh, I come from an age of computers where we had to struggle. You know, uh, my first experience with, with IT was working with DOS 6.22 and then progressed through the Windows cycle. If you had asked me a question, in the early 2000s, what was my primary operating system? I would have said Windows all the way. Yeah, that, that's what I'd grown up with, the history of it, the, the trials and tribulations, the blue screens of death and uh, the heartache. If you ask me today what my preference to systems is, I wouldn't say anything. It's, it's about the user experience. Uh, whenever someone says, what's the best computer system? I, I turn around to them saying, well, what do you prefer? What's your preference? How do you want to, want to work with it? You know, I've seen people that have worked in Windows all their life and, you know, introduce them to a new operating system and suddenly, you know, everything clicks for them and, you know, it's no more hassle. So, you know, moving from someone from a PC to a Mac environment and, you know, you can see, you know, it's about personal experience of how they engage with these systems. I've seen a lot of people that have moved to a Mac environment, you know, over the last kind of eight years. I would highly recommend people moving back to Windows uh, because, the, you know, the changes that they've made uh, are quite simple now to, to operate and, and manage with an environment. My, my role is basically providing support to customers, partners and staff related to hardware, software, services, cloud services, cloud strategies, um, pretty much anything really. Um, uh, I have, you know, I've flown drones, we've worked with 360 cameras, you know, VR. We experiment quite a bit with different technologies to, to see what, what best suits the customer's needs. And I suppose really uh, that, that's how I want to kind of frame the, the outline for for this podcast is, is to talk about those elements, you know, uh, hardware, software, and, and services. So the type of things that we can help customers with is, is if we look at the hardware perspective, one of the the main questions I suppose we we'll lead into is what kind of hardware do I need to, to run Revit? And to, to dispel the, the, the discussion points about Mac versus PC, yes, you can run them on both. There's just, you have to understand that there are caveats to it. Although Apple designed very good equipment, uh, that are uh, stable equipment, they don't necessarily use the best parts. And what I mean by that is they don't necessarily use the best GPUs or, or uh, when it comes to a laptop, uh, they don't use the fastest hard drives. And sometimes that can lead to slow performance. But for, it really comes down to use case and personal, personal experience of, of what, what, how, how and what, what you want to use. Most cases we have situations where people already have existing hardware. And um, they're trying to make existing hardware work, you know, for their uh, for their needs, 
we've had a customer where they've invested heavily in 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 Max and want to move to Rivet, but there's a slight problem with with utilizing older hardware especially with, with 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 mac environment that those that equipment might not meet the requirement the the biggest issue with with using mac is you have to weigh up uh which how you want to work because the best way to w work with a mac is to to work within boot camp which is essentially working out of the mac environment out of the mac operating system you're running windows 10 on on uh on a Mac and the reason you have to do it that way is because you don't really want to share hardware resources you can go and run it in parallels which is like a virtual uh, software that runs on on the the desktop of the the Mac OS and uh, be able to achieve it that way where the Windows operating system is actually hidden and all you're seeing is the applications that are running in the Windows environment as a normal application on, on the Mac system but that's then using shared resources. So now you have to upgrade just to be able to manage your current daily workflows and be able to handle the, the, the Windows environment as well. So you, you, there's just, you have to know what you have to, what you have to weigh up and what you're gonna lose by working in a Mac environment. If there's, you know, if there's nothing that's really holding you to the Mac OS, there's no specific applications that have been designed for the Mac OS and, and can, you can move to a Windows environment. You can still use the hardware, but obviously you have to switch to a Windows uh, environment completely. So yes, it can be done, but it is hardware dependent. Uh, and it also depends on, on your requirements as well, because if you look at the different types of people working with Revit, I mean, w if it's a customer, um, a senior exec that is just going to uh, just needs to open up the model and is running Revit, yeah, run it in parallels. I mean, they're, they're not doing any work as, as such or drilling uh, deep into maybe um, a design, but they might just need to view. So, you know, using a parallel environment for that is quite simple. I mean, obviously, a, a Mac as well is very slim, it's sleek, it's, it's not too heavy, it's, it's easy to carry around in a laptop. But you can achieve the same thing from a Surface Pro 6. You know, it's just weighing up, you know, the user's experience at the end of the day, what they want to achieve from their hardware. That, that's the most difficult. And then obviously the other thing is budget. Those are the two things. So, uh, whether it's user experience or how much money do you have to actually spend. And really, how big are your models going to be? And when I say big models, I'm not talking about the file size, how complex the model is, how, how, how many objects there are within the model. That defines what your, your hardware requirement is. And I suppose that leads into kind of the, the elements of, of the hardware itself. You know, uh, when I'm looking at hardware, what am I looking for? Well, primary is GPU. Well, in my view, primary is the hard drive. In this day and age, you should be looking at SSD minimum, solid state drive minimum, preferably NVMe solid state drive. They super fast. The performance of the machine doubles. Uh, you can even do away with the i. In my view, you can do away with the i7 uh, and run a model in, on an i5 uh, as long as you've got a good GPU. Mobility GPU cards as well, preferably if they're dedicated you could quite easily run models on, on a, a cheaper laptop. Um, so those, those are key elements. And all of those drive cost. I mean, NVMe is coming down in price. Um, you know, as technology is moving, eventually, hopefully, we'll be doing away with the, the likes of RAM and NVMe and moving to one solid storage, which, because NVMe is getting very close to, to uh, the speed of memory, eventually, you'll be buying a system that doesn't actually have or require memory any longer it's just using hard drives so hopefully that will bring the cost down as well but those are key that, that is a key element for me like fast storage uh, gpus i mean if you're looking desktop versus laptop again the, there's the, always the way up of do i use geforce do i use quattro uh, do i use amd all of the, the the answers to that is yes to all of them um uh, if you're looking for support, the things that you'll lose out is, is really if you don't use the graphics cards suggested by NVIDIA, oh, not NVIDIA, sorry, uh, Autodesk, you might not get support from them. 
because they only they're only able to test so many cards and their preference is to look at business performance cards which are quattro but that comes with a very high margin i mean the pricing of those cards is is ex extremely expensive in comparison to the gtx we use the gdx 1080s and and we have no problems with it we, you know we're able to to render our projects we cross-platform uh, uh, workflows where they, they vr versus revit versus 3D Max or, or any of those applications, it gives us their, 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 their flexibility. Whereas the Quattros are, are yes, they're designed specifically for line-based or, or um, CAD-based environments, but at the price point, you, you, the difference that your laptop jumps in price versus uh, GTX versus Quattro is almost a thousand euro, which is a lot of money sometimes. I mean, our c customers aren't just you know, uh, high-end customers that have a workflow and have great budgets and or, uh, to manage their hardware. We have customers that are, are you know, student-based customers and they're looking for hardware to, to be able to get into those work, work streams. And, you know, sometimes you have to be a little bit more flexible, but you still be able to achieve working with those, those files and applications. So hardware, again, is, comes down to cost and preference. How much how how much time do you have just i mean from a cost point of view how much time do you have spend trawling through forums to find solutions to things versus buying uh, a card that is supported by the application that you've installed on your computer and being able to go to them and get them to do the work for you so it's just you have to weigh those things up to 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 have a, a solution to manage your workflows i suppose that that goes to software as well I mean, really, there's not much more like whether you're using Autodesk software or whether you're using other applications like Adobe, Creative Suite, or um, all of these cards are supported by these these applications. There's, there's just understand that AMD there's certain features within like Adobe that AMD is not supported. You know, if you want to use the Mercury uh, render engine or some rotoscoping or something like that, you you need to be in the video uh, in Nvidia. Uh, hardware environment to be able to support those soft or those software elements with those applications also it goes to 3d max you know same thing about the hardware and the gpu you know, whether it will actually support for rendering i mean some of the if we were talking about software i suppose if we had to talk about software from a os level upwards to you know building a system these days doesn't take long i, I can have a fully kitted out system built from scratch uh, 45 to 50 minutes you know but i have the experience to do that you know if you had, had to ask me to build this kind of system 10 years ago not achievable because there was just the stability of hardware is is, is just not the same as it is these days in my view it's so much simpler to to get software onto a machine get it working making sure it's stable making sure the right elements are on if you're using imaging where you're actually imaging uh, software or the, the, the disks to, to other hardware, these days the tools are a lot easier to use. You can create one uh, master image you can push out to all the various um, hardware platforms provided you've got the drivers. So the tools out there to, to, to achieve this are much e easier. Managing images on disks and, and partitioning on disks aren't what they used to be like 10 years ago. Much easier to, to, to actually manage. So. With all the great innovations of, over the years and all the hard work that we went through in here dot of, of IT, things are simpler. Um, I suppose the other things that is in terms of services and you know, some of the services that we offer from remote su support services, you know, uh, one of the key elements for us is being able to support a customer on the fly. You know, I need help right now. And, you know, things that we weigh up is, you know, whether you're using Skype, TeamViewer, uh, whether you're using things like um, uh, follow my PC or any of these remote remote uh, support aspects in, in my view and, and uh, everyone has their own view team view for me is is a better application it's so easy to manage the quality of the stream for for remote services is really good 
and you know especially if you're supporting a customer and you need to get them into uh, or you need to get connected them very quickly there's so many tools that or, or web applications that you can manage to get people connected really quickly to be able to support people and uh, I think what TeamView is one of our driving applications for support um, because seeing what's on screen and be able to interact with with, with the customer makes their user experience uh, much easier as well. Cloud strategies. At Octox, we like to think of us as cloud first. Our strategy is to move away from uh, server-based environments sitting on site and looking at cloud solutions. And also thinking about how that's going to impact from a security point of view, making sure that security is at the forefront of any of our decisions, but also keeping in mind that we want a cloud-first strategy. Utilizing and, and, uh, and leveraging the likes of the Microsoft platforms, the Azure platforms. And, and in our case, because we're advising across, we have to look at all platforms. So, you know, whether it's uh, the Google platform or, or if it's uh, AWS. And then also the, if there's a mix and match between the two of them. There's always different services that uh, we have to look at. But, you know, those are the things that we, we can advise people on. So some of the things that we, I suppose, to describe our environment a little bit to help people kind of understand their, their, their requirements. So our facility in, 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 in Sandyford here, um, we have a training environment, we have a production environment, uh, we have admins, we have executives. So from a hardware perspective, our executives are running things like uh, Surface Pros um, with we install Revit on their systems. They're able to open up the models. They can review models. They can interact with uh, BIM technologies, you know, whether it's BIM 360 or any other kind of CD environments. Um, our training environment, we, from a, a clean room perspective, we're using all-in-ones. We're using HP's uh, all-in-one desktops, 24-inch monitors um, or 24-inch computers, uh, running a dedicated GPU built in and um, 16 gigs of RAM uh, as, as a baseline. Hard drives are running two 56 gig SSDs with the old SSD, the uh, disk-based ones, the two and a half inch ones. And that is, I mean, those particular systems are, are suitable for, for that environment. But in a training environment, you're not utilizing big models, but for, for the perspective of training and, and be able to deliver the training uh, and be able to collaborate, those systems are perfect for that. I mean, you can achieve the same thing in a high-end workstation all-in-one system if you, you tight for space in that. It really depends on your, your, your environment and what the requirement is. I mean, it's always, you know, these big desktops, in my view, are a waste of space. I mean, it's space that I could have to, uh, in putting more people in, in an office environment with, with, with using workstation, um, all-in-one workstations. They're few and far between, but if you do a hunt and you look around and you speak to your suppliers or you want us to speak to your suppliers to find the right hardware for you, you know, we certainly do that. I mean, my personal environment, I use an, an iMac 27-inch uh, monitor with uh, running Windows. I don't even go back to the uh, Apple Mac operating system at all. I, I stay within the Windows environment and it suits my needs because, uh, you know, on occasions I'm doing video editing and... I'm doing, um, you know, management of the the infrastructure, our infrastructure, our cloud services infrastructure. So there's a cross mix of everything going on. You know, whether it's hardware, we, we use a, a mesh network, like from a network perspective, we use a mesh network, make sure that we have wireless connectivity everywhere in case, uh, you know, anyone's sitting anywhere. We run dual networks, one for our guests and one for our, for our in-house. You know, from our mobile perspective, we actually have a third network just for our mobiles so that um, we don't have you know, devices connecting to sensitive uh, environments. So we, we, we split things out that way. You know, our servers, we have a single server that manages all, all that we require for, from a, a local perspective, but everything else is sitting within in the cloud. You know, and also, I mean, from a customer's perspective, we, we, we're very sensitive to the fact that, you know, people are concerned about storage and cloud. You know, we take the, all precautions to make sure that that that's, uh, meets the client's requirements. 
um, security, in, in my view, is first. Uh, we have to make sure that security is in place. You know, and, and that kind of leads to things like future technologies. What, how are we looking? I mean, Google's announcement last week uh, in relation to uh, cloud gaming is, in my view, is going to change a lot of things. I mean, you know, most things start within in the gaming environment because of you know the massive budgets they have there. That cloud streaming. In my view, is if, if Autodesk and, and those applications start moving to the cloud and being able to work, negates the fact of requiring these heavy-based machines now um, to run these these applications, and it, that would, in my view, would extend the lifespan of, of certain hardware. If we could fast forward, uh, like uh, until the time that Autodesk released something like that. Essentially, the all-in-ones that we've purchased today would still be able to run the, the same applications without actually having to upgrade them you know, every four years. The future for, for technology looks bright, for, in, in my view. It makes a huge impact. I mean, just from a personal perspective, with kids at home, with computers and that, I've got three kids that, you know, they're all playing on networks and games and different things like that, trying to manage and making sure that everyone's got the right hardware so they can achieve what they want to can be quite costly. So hopefully those kind of services will allow us to, to achieve a lot more. Yeah, other, other areas that we, we, we're experimenting with at the moment is VR. You know, we, we, we looked at the different v, v, VR technologies and I suppose this is where I started off before. It's, it's all about user experience at the end of the day. And you could look at the best uh, Oculus Rift, you can look at the best uh, uh, HTC Vive and all the different uh, variations and from a setup perspective in my view Windows virtual reality mixed reality headsets if you're comparing to HTC Vive and that it's actually very easy to set up in, in, as a comparison you know the Vives especially the older Vives you know you have to set up these these uh, readers the, the the cameras to 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 understand your virtual space Whereas the mixed reality headsets, you don't need that. The cameras are built into the headset as well. You've got a single cable going around. So from a setup perspective, it was much easier. I mean, we've done some demonstrations at various events at DCU. A setup perspective is a simple laptop and, and this headset without having to do this big setup configuration. You know, and it's experimenting with it, but understanding what, what the requirements are. The caveat to that is, or the, the shortfall of that is that there's so much more support to the, the likes of HTC Vive and that. There's always someone out there that's that's trying to make hardware work for themselves. So there's all the information's there if, if required. And you can see very quickly how these mixed reality headsets have actually got some support now to be able to achieve the same thing the HTC Vives can. I, I actually did a test where I had the HTC Vive, the older version, versus the mixed reality headset. And the mixed reality headset's quality of view was actually better than the HTC Vive. Investing in these things, in my view, is, you know, you have to try these things out and preferably try these things out when, when they're right next to each other before you make the purchase and understand the, the cost differences. I mean, comparison, HTC Vive, 699 plus you need the hardware, Whereas the we we bought some mixed reality headsets from Microsoft's website for 199, makes a big difference in terms of cost, especially if you're experimenting. You don't want to go and throw a lot of cost at at a solution, not to really achieve what you were expecting because of this fancy video someone had done at a at a presentation, something that has a controlled narrative that makes it seem better than it actually is because the work that's put into it at the end of the day will reflect the outcome. Sometimes you just don't have the time to kind of produce these uh, wonderful productions. You, you're on a short time frame, and how to achieve that is sometimes looking at reducing the, the cost elements on your hardware. So it's, it's those kind of things. You know, we, we've experimented with things with, uh, uh, with 360 cameras using Hollow Builder to, uh, to track information w w within a build you know, while you're building for health and safety. Uh, we looked at things with smart video, where smartvid.ie, where, sorry, smartvid.io, which is very interesting technology where you walk around a site and you can actually record the sound. And as you're doing a, a, your walkthrough, 
you can just call out certain things. So you can say things like, uh, tag this as a, as a risk because the stair is damaged. And SmartVid will take all that information in the video and it will categorize the audio into actionable actions, which is really, really sm smart technology. I mean, something where you, uh, you don't have to go and actually document everything by hand. You actually do it by voice is, is quite amazing. So that's, that's also interesting technology. But I mean, IT is like this deep pool of information of all these different various technologies. Trying to hone this in, into a small podcast could could take four hours. So I suppose this 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 is series one of of information and technology and breaking or misspelling uh, myths. Sign off for me if you need any help. Uh, free to contact me. You can reach me on ken at arcdocs.com. Uh, have any needs or helps or want us to help you with your IT or your infrastructure, cloud services, anything really, feel free to contact us. I hope this was informative and uh, see you next time.